Good morning. Morning. Oh, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> You know, it hasn't always worked so well for him. Even though it's not the person you like. Yes! Is there something so wrong with that? Hi, welcome to Comedy Parenting Radio. My name's Jerry Begley, and this is the only show that hands out candy corn on Valentine's Day. Who's in the top slot this week, Dad? Well, very interesting. Uh, we have someone from a different country. Yeah. From British Columbia, Canada, we have Abbott's Ford. Congratulations. Oh. So what's Abbott's Ford known for? Well, one of the top ten things that Abbott's Ford is known for is picking apples. Oh, that's apples, mate. What kind of apples? Well, they'd be frozen ones right now. If you guys want to have a great time, head on up to Abbott's Ford, British Columbia in Canada and pick some frozen apples while listening to Comedy Parenting Radio. They downloaded and played more episodes this last week than anybody in the world. A frozen apple a day keeps the doctor away. Unless you bite into it. Then you might have to call a dentist. As the troops take their places over here on the other side of the table, today we're going to be talking about Valentine's Day Disruptions. Stay tuned. Swing hot. You're listening to Comedy Parenting Radio. You're back with Comedy Parenting Radio, Valentine's Day Disruptions. Every Valentine's Day, it's a huge rush for guys to get presents for their girls and bring them a balloon and flowers and stuff. And sometimes there's such a rush that one time on the day after, February 15th, I went into City Market and there were balloons but there weren't any strings in the balloons. They had all just floated to the top of the, the balloon basket at City Market. And so somebody got a string for Valentine's Day. If they remember. Either that or maybe it was like big tall basketball players were on this reaching up there in the basket and getting the balloons for their sweetheart. <laughs> they used to make fun of him for being tall. Now he gets all the best balloons. Come to think of it, I've, I've never seen a midget walking down the street with a Valentine's balloon. This is true. I mean, we don't really have any midgets around here anyways. We don't have any tall basketball players either. Yeah, that's a good point. For that matter, we don't even have any people. Uh, Josiah, did you want to say something about Valentine's Day destruction? <clears throat> yes. So this isn't a true story, but it could happen. But you get this like candy box that has like sweetheart and such, and you spell their name wrong, and someone picks it up because it's right next to them, and they're like, ah... <laughs> Even though it's not the person you like. So maybe your girlfriend's name was Sue, spelled S-U-E, but when you wrote it on the box, you actually put S-O-O. So a Chinese girl picked it up. So, Josh is not so sure about that one. It wasn't the top bar of comedy, that's for certain, but... We're kind of getting warmed up on the show right now here, so... I'm just getting out of bed. Well... You would think if it was somebody that you really, really liked and you was you were really crushing hard on her, then you maybe might know how to spell her name. Maybe. Bold of you to assume that I know how to spell. <laughs> there are those people who like people and don't know who those people are. <laughs> oh, that one handsome man that I saw walking past me that one time. Hey, uh, what's his name from uh, Ruth? He didn't know Ruth's name. He had to ask the people. Was that Boaz? Yes, Boaz. What about Valentine's candy with all those sayings on them? That's what I was saying. You hand them out on accident. But sure, go ahead. I think that we've had the same ones for around too long. I think we need some new sayings on them. I think that we need to start hiding secret messages in them. So we should get rid of the candy hearts that say, I love you as much as my Model T. (laughs) or hey baby cakes (laughs) you know there's a big market out there by the way it would be anti-valentine's candy 
for all oh, the yeah? people that hate Valentine's Day because they're sad and lonely little souls. And hate people? Yeah, so you could have candy, you know, that's like hate messages to give out to people. I loathe you as a human being. Your father was a twig and your mother smelled of elderberries. <laughs> I hate you to the moon and back. <laughs> Go back to the zoo where you belong. <laughs> I hate you worse than my Model T. You're listening to Comedy Parenting Radio, and even though we don't know some people and they don't know us, we like them a lot. We'll be right back. But you don't have to call me darling, darling. You never even call me by my name. This is Crazy Russian Dead. You're listening to Comedy Parenting Radio. In Soviet Russia, homework do you. Are you a failure as a parent or grandparent? Do your little ones cry for no apparent reason? Do you have lots of money? If you answered yes to these or any other invasive questions, we have good news for you. Treesock Press was named after a cat. A very cute cat. Treesock Press printed a book. That book is available in nearly indestructible hardback form and is printed with non-toxic ink so your little dinosaur can virtually eat the book. If this all seems too good to be true, you can go buy a cheap Disney book that's printed in China. Books printed in China aren't as good for teething toddlers as ones printed in Wisconsin. What's the name of our book? Dad the Tooth Fairy Didn't Come. This book is funnier than a root canal on a sinking ship. I didn't know ships had teeth. Order your copies of Dad the Tooth Fairy Didn't Come from Amazon today. Or tomorrow if you're on the International Dateline. You're listening to Comedy Parenting. Stop imitating Fezzik, and I mean it. Does anybody want to do that? Watch it. Cupid. Tell me about Cupid. You know, the little baby that flies around with wings and a bow and arrow. little thing there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Flies around with wings and a bow and arrow and shoots, shoots, shoots love arrows at people. And Out of season, I might add. Does he get a tag? Does, does Cupid get like a tag for Valentine's season, maybe, from the Division of Wildlife? That's a good question. They need to check his license. But go I think, ahead. I think he's filled his tag too many times. <laughs> you know, it hasn't always worked so well for him. What do you mean by that? I mean, there was one year where the uh, Fletcher ran out of arrows. And what did they do? Well, he had to he had to go down to the dollar store and buy some off-brand uh, love arrows. Wait, he's getting love arrows to shoot at people at the dollar store? Yeah. That can't work out too good. It didn't. It ended up causing chicken pox. And then you just share the love, you know? Scratch, scratch. <laughs> That Valentine's Day, people were getting chocolates and chicken pox. I hear an oatmeal bath was a uh, favorite thing to give your lover. <laughs> what about the chocolates? Chocolates, a really big deal on Valentine's Day. You know what's the worst thing that can happen when you give your sweetie some chocolates? They could be banana flavored? That's the second worst thing. The first worst thing is when they unwrap the whole thing and take the cellophane wrapping off and they open up the box and you're going to share one or whatever and you see one that's in there and someone already bit it in half. Boy, those factory workers sure love chocolate. I mean, if my childhood taught me anything, then I know that it was actually Curious George. Each of the factory workers weigh about 600 pounds. Maybe they're trying to figure out what is in each little uh, paper cup, which type of chocolate is in each paper cup. Hmm, yeah. They have to know so they can properly label the box. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Or put them in the right spot. That's why they lick each chocolate. <gasps> I just realized the perfect place to go to Valentine's Day with your girlfriend or... Where? Go to Belgium. They make chocolate. Like, lots and lots of chocolate. The land of chocolate. Now go with Willy Wonka. 
Right. Don't you ride like a chocolate flavored swan? What? No. What Have you read the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory books? Yeah, they used to do that, but then they got shut down by Osho. What is it they ride through? Chocolate something or no, other? It's a, it's a chocolate they ride river. through a chocolate river. A on chocolate a strawberry, river. Uh, strawberry, what's that called? Ferris. Yeah, no, they ride through the chocolate river on a giant strawberry Ferris wheel. I'm not reading that book anymore. <laughs> Valentine's Cards. They're so hard to pick out. You go through, there's the funny ones, the serious ones, the really romantic ones. Then the when I was your age, they had the cards that were like two feet tall. Do they still have those? I haven't seen them as of late. You could actually buy a Valentine's card that was two feet tall. Wow. And then in, when you open up the card, you had to write really big, Jerry. And then drop it in your school hearts. School hearts. Your, your school. school your sweetheart. Your school sc- locker. Yeah, then drop it in your sweetheart school locker. Yeah, you have to fold it up to get it in there. <laughs> you have to roll it around a pencil. The cheaper way to do it, of course, is to cut out your own valentines, right? So you take a piece of paper and snip, 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 open it up. What do you have? A snowflake? Yes, that's what I had for a couple of years until I actually learned how to do a valentine. It, it turns out, folks, that uh, cutting a valentine is a lot easier than a snowflake. I know, I know. But <clears throat> I don't know why, but whenever I try to cut out a valentine's card, I end, I end up with a paper doll. There's also the fact that getting that little top cut on the top of the heart, that little notch there, right there, yeah, is actually almost impossible to get perfect. Yeah. If you do that, you're either cheating by using an X-Acto knife or... Um, You're a magician. When you unfold it, it actually looks like a butterfly. Yeah. Yeah, not, not a Valentine's heart. So I, <laughs> I'm actually opposed to making your Valentine's at home, okay? Go buy the expensive ones for $5. I mean, Mom was really good at making hearts. She your must mom, be a ma- magician. She was really good at hearts. This episode was sponsored by the Hallmark Card Foundation of America and Kansas and Canada and also Columbus Day. You are the woman that I knew it from the start I saw your face and that's the last I've seen of my heart All right, for one million dollars and a free trip to Goshen, Indiana What do the letters C-P-R stand for? Cardio, pulmonary, resuscitation so sorry, they stand for Comedy Parenting Radio. I got a little change in my pocket going jingle thing. Won't you call you on the telephone, baby? I give you a ring, but each time we talk, I get the same old thing. Always no hooky, no dizzy, until I get a wedding ring. My honey, my baby, don't put my love upon no shelf. She said, don't give me no lie. And keep your hands to yourself What about how expensive Valentine's Day is? I mean Real expensive This coming from you What about me? She wants to be expended upon Yes! Is there something so wrong with that? Chocolates, flowers, date. Dinner, movies, diamonds. If any guys know Courtney out there, just like dump your entire paycheck on her for Valentine's Day, okay? (laughs) If you have a paycheck. (gasps) Hey, sweetie, how'd you like to take a little walk with me in my shopping cart? Have a romantic dinner of trash. Hey, lady in the tramp, you know. (laughs) Keep in mind, I know where you guys sleep. What about the Valentines that you cut off of, like, the ding-dong boxes and the Twinkie boxes? Those are the best, because you get to eat a whole box of ding-dongs, and then you get this little Valentine to give to somebody. And if you know 20 people, you get to eat 20 boxes of ding-dongs and <laughs> give them all free Valentines. It's like the best thing going. Oh, the sacrifices that you go through the pe- for the people that you love. It's all about love. Door knobs. Door knob. <laughs> One of our cast members is getting doorknobbed at the moment, so he's all black and blue. If you don't, Matches the roses. If you don't know what that means, just Google doorknobbing. 
Is that like Googling? Googling doorknobbing? I suppose. Yeah. Uh, he has to run to a doorknob before they stop pounding on him. Apparently they do it on submarines, too. Ouch. You've been listening to Comedy Parenting Radio. We have? We want to thank you guys for coming into the studio today. Of course. You're welcome. Welcome. And before you guys go. Yeah? Yeah. Yes. Feel free to take gobs and gobs of that candy corn over there in the corner. It's still from last year. Bye-bye. Candy Corn says, I love you more than my John Deere tractor.